Hi, my name is Zachary McClellan, and today we're going to go over the Leadership Strength Finders presentation. And what this is going to do is we took a poll, and this poll gave us our five top leadership strengths, and we're going to go over them one by one today in importance and figure out how we can use them practically and how we can manifest these in everyday uses of our life. Now the big idea of this is we want to discover, elaborate on, and exactly what I said earlier, we want to manifest these in our everyday capabilities. So once we have these five, we can talk about the strengths of them, how we're going to use these in the micro and the macro, and eventually how we can put these into everyday practice. Now my first one, which I found, was focus. Now focus is one of those words that can be used in both the micro and the macro. And what this means is focus is how we get the jobs done in everyday orderly tasks. So we have our where we are now and we have our end goal. How we get there is through focus. So along the way we want to set up these checkpoints, such as for a team at the quarter of the season, at the halfway point and three quarters, where do we want to be? We're going to use focus through this to help achieve our goals. Now the second one was analytical. Analytical is very true. I am very someone that is analytical. So what this means is I love numbers. I love data. I love using this focus concept. Let's put it together and find trends. Let's find patterns, how we use these externalities, both positive and negative. And eventually the goal is after each checkpoint, we want to take the negative externalities and figure out a way to make them positive externalities. Now, one thing I will say about the analytical mind is it's very short term focused. The analytical mind is going to stay from one checkpoint to the other and live in that checkpoint. The thing about the analytical mind is it can also fail to see the big picture. And what I mean by this is analytics are a funny thing to where they stick together. So most analytical people love the numbers. They don't like being in front of the people. They don't like the social status. They want to be in the background. They want to construct it from the beginning to the end and they want to live from checkpoint to checkpoint. Now my third one is probably the farthest away from analytical that we could go and it's achieving. And the reason I say it's very contradictory to analytical is because achieving is our big picture idea. So we have it right here. We have where we are. For example, my sophomore year here at Southeastern University, I was on the baseball team. And at the beginning of the year, we set a goal. We hadn't won any games, we hadn't played any games. And our goal was to win the national championship. Now why this contradicts to being analytical is because me sitting in the chair, a sophomore in college, I'm like there's no way this can happen. You have to win 55 some odd games out of 60. You have to win your conference or at least become eligible for a regional. Then once you get to a regional, it's like, all right, you have to win the regional just to get to the national. And that doesn't include beating the best six teams that are there. But I once heard that if your dream doesn't scare you, it's not a God dream. And that's where that achiever comes in. We want to have the most potential, the largest outcome that we can. And that's kind of why it's different from analytical, but we can use our analysis from checkpoint to checkpoint, along with our focus in both the micro and the macro, to achieve that achiever. Now my fourth one is probably the most debatable in 2020 and 2019 in our current day, and it's competition. See, competition, Is, it's, it lives on a fickle line to where it can motivate you to out, out win, out work, out weight lift, out beat anyone that you could ever go up against. But at the same time, if your group is not in unison, if you don't have that team dynamic that lives in the same competition, it can derail any plan you may have. Meaning if you have two or three of the group members that love what they're doing, they're super passionate about it, and they're going to rise to the top. But you also have two or three who are just kind of stagnant. They're here because they have to be here, it's in their class, their parents want them to play on this team, then they can be a cancer to the group and eventually butt heads ruining a team dynamic or anything that could be potentially your team dynamic. And so that's where competition really comes in and everyone has to be on the same dynamic. Because if they're not, what we see is teams that literally cave in halfway through the year. Such as if you have a team with all of this talent but no team cohesion, all the competition, all of the work you put into it is for nothing because the group will eventually crumble on top of themselves. Now the last one is significance. See the thing about significance is it goes a long way with achieving because significance is very group thought oriented. 
And what this means is we use our groupthink process to make sure everyone in the group is satisfied. And that's where significance comes in. Because significance to me means everyone in my group knows that they're worthy, knows that their work is appreciated and they're more than welcome to help. Now, if it's a team, it makes sure that even a relief pitcher on the days he's not pitching lets him know that he is still a valuable asset of this team. Now, with all of this being said, I understand that these strengths aren't bulletproof, that these five strengths do not build the perfect leader. If they did, everyone would kind of look to have these five strengths. So to go back, I kind of want to look us on the weaknesses of some of these so that I myself can try to fix them and become a more and better well-rounded leader. So when it comes to focus and analytics, one of my main goals are when you're in these, when you're in the bunkers, when you're in these checkpoint to checkpoint areas, we want to still be able to see the big picture. We need to understand why this checkpoint is so crucial to the big picture to help us manage the checkpoint at all. Now when it comes to achieving, that's our big ticket item. That's our God dream. That's how we get there. But sometimes it does need to be a little realistic. Excuse me. For example, if we have a startup company, our God dream shouldn't be to do $3 million worth of sales in the first year. That is where the focus and analytical and competition comes in. Now we will get there and we have to work closely with ambition, but ambition without focus and ambition without being analytical is like having a house with no roof. Eventually rain will come in and your foundation will wear out. So now let's use all of these, including significance, to build something that lasts. Build a leader that not only can motivate his team, can assess the competence of his team, but so that the team feels valued, they feel trusted, and they're ready to go back to work every day knowing they have a common goal and end. And that's where competition comes in. Because if we can add all four of these and add that competitive factor, then that's what we look for in a competitive team. And if we have a competitive team that's all in unison, then it is very easy to be a leader because we can more delegate than direct. And once we get to the point where we can delegate, that frees us up for more responsibility and giving our team more responsibility, which will yield larger dividends and also create a better product in anything that we serve to do. And also, I would like to thank you, Professor Carls, for just having mercy with me on this. Um, I know that this isn't something that will ever happen again, and I just want to say thank you very much.